I'm going to add a thousand to that. Hallelujah. Every time you deposit a praise, hallelujah, you can make a deposit off of it. Come on, praise team. Look, me and Pastor Charles, we're going to do a tag team. And Pastor Charles is going to come before me. Then I'm going to come right behind Pastor Charles and we're going to end it from there. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Let's just begin to worship him. Lord, we thank you, God, for your healing. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for keeping us, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, oh. Just softly help me say that. Oh. To worship you, I live 
to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. Oh, 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 oh. y'all, I love this part. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh. oh, oh, oh. believe that today in the name of Jesus the precious name of Jesus Satan you have to flee oh tell me who can stand be for us when we Call on that great name. Now I need about five folks to help me call them. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. 
Cause you have the victory I'ma say that one more time Say in the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus I have the victory There's nothing too hard for God Hallelujah Oh in the name of Jesus the precious name of Jesus. Say, God, you have to flee. Come on, if you mean it, you gotta open up your mouth and say it. Hallelujah. So tell me, who can stand me? Hallelujah. For us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Now let's bless them. Now let's bless them. God, we bless you. God, we bless you for being our protector, Jesus. God, we bless you. God, we bless you. Hallelujah, God, we have the victory because you. God, because you laid your life down for us. Because you died on the cross for us, Jesus. We have the victory. Oh. Sometimes you gotta just reach back and cry out. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We claim the victory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we magnify you. God, we worship you. We praise you. We praise you, Lamb of God. We magnify your great name. You're awesome, God, in this place. You're marvelous. You're sovereign, you're holy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your name, God. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know if you experienced that power, but I have. And I found out when God is on the move, Guess what? He trampled through everything that gets in his way. That's the mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm excited today. I tell you, God is really moving in this place today by his spirit. Just come on. Just give God another hand. Praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence in this place. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing flowing in the atmosphere. We even thank you now, God, for all the things you have done thus far. As now, God, prepare our hearts to receive the inspired word from the heart of God that would change our lives, that would inspire, build us up in our faith to trust you, encourage somebody that needs encouragement today, God, to know that everything going to be all right. We ask, Lord, that you have your God-like way continually through the rest of the service. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Now anoint the word, God, that it would speak to our hearts, O oh God, from the heart of God, to perfect the saints, O oh God, according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, sister, for that praise and worship. It's truly awesome. And thank you, Lord, for my pastor today. And 
for what God is doing through us today. We just pray that something be said that will encourage you today to get in your Bible. Get in your Bible. It's very important to get into the Word. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We're going to be talking about the power of the breach today, the power of the breach. But I want to um, talk about, I want to tell you the definition of a breach. A breach is an act of breaking, of, falling, of failing to observe the law. Also, a breach is a gap in the wall, a barrier or a defense, especially one made by an attacking enemy. So we got to know what breaches are before we can understand what, what, how to deal with them. And then the power. Power is the ability to act or produce an effect. The ability to get an extra base hit. Not only that, possession of control or authority. So that's what God is telling us today that when we get a revelation of what we're dealing with in our lives, you know how to deal with it with the word of God. You know how to attack the enemy with the word of God and how to overcome the enemy by your praise and your worship. It's very important to know the relationship we have with God is not, it's not just about us. It's about inspiring somebody else come to know the same Savior that we have experienced in our own personal lives and give God the glory that they will come to salvation. Amen. Amen. I want to thank all the ministers and everyone that's here today. This uh, past Friday, we had an awesome home going service for our brother Thomas. It was really wonderful. I thank God for the message he gave me to speak to the family, to encourage them, to remind them that the Lord is the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He's our shepherd. Not only that, he's everything we need going through the valley of shadows of death, through the storm of life. He's there. He prepared table for your present enemy to let you know that, hey, you can sit down and just rest in, in the presence of your enemies. You ain't got to worry about the enemies because we have power. And today we want to talk about the power of the breach. I'm actually, if you will, stand and read. I'm going to read one of the scriptures, but I'm going to go into different scriptures in Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. I have my child. Thank you. In Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Then Elishabi, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and they builded the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set, set it up the doors of it, even unto the towers of Maya. They sanctified it unto the towers of Hanelia. And the next unto them builded the, it says, and next unto him builded the men of Jericho. And next, uh, next to them builded the the Zachar, the son of memory. So in other words, all the different parts that make up this wall, he had different people strategically planted in position to build this wall. In chapter 4, verse 1 says, It came to pass that when Samalit heard that we build the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren, the army of Samaria, and said, What do these feeble Jews Will they fortify themselves or will they sanctify? Will they make an end in the day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Amorite was by him and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. You may be seated. You may be seated. But then it goes on and said, Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquities, and let not their sins be blotted out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So we built the wall, and all the walls was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. In order to overcome the power, overcome breaches, the what I'm trying to say, is, excuse me. In order to overcome breaches, you got to remember John 10, 19. Jesus told disciples, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents 
and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, right? If you know your word, that's in there. So not only that, he said, you take up anything deadly poison, it will not harm you. Why? Because he gave them the ability and he enunciated a force from the Spirit of God into them that enabled them to overcome anything they would encounter that was of the enemy. Come on. This is what God is talking about. The power of the breach. So in order to overcome the breach, you've got to know the power. Just like, okay, for example, let's go here then. Everyone have a house they live in, right? Or some place you live in. What do you have to keep the lights on in the house? Power, right? What happens if the power is turned off? You don't pay your bill. There's a breach in, in your finances for that bill. So what's it going to do? Turn off your power, right? The enemy does the same thing with the body of Christ because we don't know the availability of the power God has given us. So the enemy comes along and says, you know what? I'm going to turn off their power. Guess what your power is? Your praise. Your consecration. Your intimacy with God, that's your power. When you get to a secret place, that's why I love the scripture when Jesus talked about when you enter into your secret closet and you pray in secret, the Father sees you, he will reward thee openly because he sees you in a secret place doing what? Seeking his face. So when I seek God's face, the devil says, you know what? I know they've been in a place of consecration. I've been watching them. I watch Charlene. I See how she been getting into a place where she want to wave that flag all the time. She want to praise God all the time. She want to dance before the Lord. I see her, but I'm going to wait till she's vulnerable. That's what the enemy does. He waits till he finds a breach in your life. So he sees that open pathway to come in and out of your life as he chooses. He says, you know what? I'm going to disable their power. And we have to recognize that when the enemy comes against us, we are not finding just any force. We find a force that used to be in heaven that was an angel of worship, the angel of praise. We find a force that was dispelled from heaven, and God says he had dominion over the earth. So he gave him the power of the air in the earth realm. So the enemy knows that I have power. Guess what that power does? He has power to influence you. So he comes along, and he gets into your mindset. And he gets into your mind, he'll bring those desires, he'll bring those temptations, he'll bring the stuff that your flesh won't be satisfied with. Alcohol, drug addiction, fornication, lying, adultery, all kinds of stuff that the flesh is common to understand. That's why it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there's no temptation taking you but, but such as common. Something I'm a familiar with to man. But God is what? Faithful. Who will with the temptation also make a way to what? Escape. Solomon wrote in one of the, in one of the Proverbs, he said, we need to deliver yourself out, out, out of the snare of, of the fowler like a roe or a gazelle. Because the enemy has traps. He has baits that he set along your pathway as a believer to disable your power. We got bear traps. We got pitfalls. We got all kinds of uh, any place that's an entrapment. Our minds can be a trap because I get stuck in the past of things that hurt me. People hurt me. People mistreated me. So I get stuck. Instead of progressing forward, I'm stuck back here. And God said, I'm trying to break this off of you today. I'm trying to get you to the place where you get into the spirit of the living God and you allow the spirit of God to get into your heart, you got to get the word of God in your spirit because the word enables us to overcome the enemy. But if you don't know your word, how are you going to have power over the enemy? Come on now. I'm talking to a people who believe in Jesus Christ today. You say you're believers. You say you're in the house of God because you come and expect God to do something. And God is saying today, where is your power? If I gave you the power, are you going to use that power that I've given you to smite the enemy in his tracks? It's too many people in the house of God are living in depression. And God is trying to get us to break that spirit off our mind. You know what I found something about this week? The only reason I get into a place of depression, I'm talking about myself, a place of depression, 
when I turned my focus off the door, I started looking at all the stuff going on in my life, all the mayhem, and I get discombobulated in my mindset because I'm worrying about all this stuff going on. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to get over this, God? So I get to a place, I start downing God. And when you get in depression, you're downing God. Just, just make it plain, plain and clear. You're downing God's word, his ability to keep you from depression. And God says the spirit of the enemy will oppress you. Just like in the slavery days, the people were oppressed. They were bound to a slave master through oppression. Not only that, many were depressed. Because that means to take away your power. And God says today, I'm trying to restore your power. I'm trying to get you back in the word of God where you know the power that's available to you that you can tread on serpents and scorpions over all the powers of the enemy. But if you don't know what God has done for you, you don't have a testimony. How are you going to overcome the enemy if I ain't never been through a test? God, oh, help me, Jesus. I tell you, when God speaks to me, my mind just goes sometimes. I'm like, okay, God, what is it? What, what's going on? So as I went into the Word, I was reading Nehemiah, right? And I went back to 6, chapter 6. And in chapter 6, verse 1 says, Now it came to pass, when Sambalat and Tobiah and Geshem of Arabians and the rest of our enemies. You hear what I'm saying? He said many enemies. Now, he said the rest, that means it was more than one enemy. He said, no, he that heard that I had built the wall and that there was what? No breach left in the wall. And there was no breach left therein. Through these are though at times I had not set up the doors upon the gate that Sambal and, and Geshem sent unto me saying, come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of oh no, but they thought to do me mischief. You don't know your word. The enemy's plotting mischief. He's plotting confusion in your life. And you got to get in the word of God. He said, I sealed the breaches. See, a lot of us are still sitting in the house of God with breaches because we're still dealing with stuff of the flesh. Your flesh is your breach. And if your flesh is not brought to subjection to Jesus Christ, guess what it does? It opens up a portal. The enemy says, I'm coming in. I'm taking authority over your life. I'm going to strip you of your power. I'm going to take away your armor. I'm going to break you down till you have no strength to fight. God help me today. And he says that, that when Sambal and Tobiah and Geshem, the raven, the rest of our enemies, they heard. All they did was heard. They didn't see it for themselves, but they heard that we had built the wall. And because they heard it, they said, you know what? Let's try to deceive him. See what the enemy does. He said, be not deceived in our, in our eyes. God tells us that. Be aware of your adversary because he comes like a roaring lion, what? Seeking whom he may devour. So the enemy says, you know what? I see what he has done. Now I heard about it, but I'm going for myself to go see the wall. So when Tobiah and Sambalat came to see the wall, they said, hey, come down off the wall. And, and Nehemiah said, no, I ain't got time to come down to where you are. I ain't going down to the plain of, oh, no. I'm going to stay on the mountaintop. I'm going to stay on top of this wall. And the Bible tells me that the enemy was plotting against them. And it says the people had a mind to work. Some were working with the swords on their side. And some still building on the wall. And as they were working together, they came together in one accord to do what God assigned for them to do. Do you know your assignment? Do you know your assignment? Do you know what God called you to do in this season in your life? Do you know what breaches in your heart? Do you know what things is holding you back from walking the fullness of the promise that God has for you? You got to know that you know that you know that the devil is a liar. He can't have my power. He can't take my authority. I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to retain the gospel of Jesus Christ. The God I live, the God I'm willing to die. I'm going to keep on trusting in God's ability. And when you know that you know that Jesus rose from the dead, guess what he said? All power that's available in the heavens 
and in the earth's realm. He says, has been given to me. But he said, one thing I love about it, he said, I'm not going to hold this power for myself. But Father, the same people that you gave to me, God, they're not of this world. He said, they may live in the world, but they're not of the world. So the same power that I have in me, God, I want to disperse to every believer. Because I know, God, they're going to be faced with some devils. I know they're going to be challenged with some illnesses. I know they're going to be enough battles, Father God, in their life. With the storm of life, when they get to raging in us, we got to stand on the word of God. And know with confidence, it may look like I'm surrounded by the enemy. It may look like I'm surrounded by depression. It may look like I'm surrounded by cancer. It may look like I'm surrounded by illnesses. It may look like my finances on bankrupt. But one thing I know, this one thing I do, I put my trust in God. Because I'm surrounded by the king of glory. I'm surrounded by the creator of mankind. I'm surrounded by Jehovah Jireh. I'm surrounded by El Shaddai. And when you know that you're surrounded by him, can nothing in this world come against me? I will not fear because God is on my side and nothing can separate me from the love of Christ because I know that my redeemer liveth my king of glory my precious savior my battle axe in the war my conquering king he defeated all my foes he brought me victory through his own blood Therefore, I can stand and say that in him I live, in him I'm willing to die. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody need to give God praise. Come on, magnify him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I'm, I'm just stay. Just leave that scripture right off that deacon. I'm just piggybacking right off what we because we're talking about this month of sealing the breach. And I've learned. I, I was just thinking, Pastor Charles, right before you sat down. And, and this word came to my mind, you know, we, we talk about the seven last words of Jesus. Nothing happened until the piercing of the side. I, 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 the Lord began to show me something. There had to be a breach before there can be a healing. Ooh, there had to be a breach. Before there could be a deliverance. There had to be a breach. Before there could be a resurrection. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. There had to be a breach. Before there can be healing. So I was thinking. <laughs> Woo you see that? You see that? You see that? Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to say that part for last. I'm going to say that part for last. We're talking about the breach. The breach in heaven. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The, 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 the thought we're dealing with is still the breach. Sometime we will never know if there's a breach until the breach is exposed. Can I speak to somebody right now until the breach is exposed? Hallelujah. I, I, I was sitting here and I was saying, uh, this Lord exposed the breach. Woo Hallelujah. Lord, expose the breach. Somebody say, expose the breach. See, because so often, so often, so often, we're living a life and we're trying to recover 
but we never know the source of the problem. The thought comes from the fact that Pastor Terry gets up here and she talks about how the Lord says, stop taking this medicine. We have to expose the breach. Because in, 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 order for, in order for Nehemiah to recognize that there was a breach in the walls, the breach had to be exposed. Hallelujah. How, first of all, if, if we have, if, and, and this is the season right now where all kinds of critters are trying to get in the homes and, and try to make themselves home, ain't paying no rent, amen. So, so therefore, we, we get to a place in time where we're trying to figure out how are they getting in. So we have to find out, we have to seal the breach. First of all, in order for us to seal the breach, we have to expose the breach. If you really want to make the devil mad, you have to expose the breach. I don't think some of y'all hit me right now because some of y'all, some of y'all still trying to figure out why you're the way you are because you haven't figured out what the root of the problem was. You have to expose the breach in order to understand how I'm going to deal with the breach because the moment you identify the breach, that's how you realize this is how I'm going to have to deal with the breach. I like this pastor Charles dealing with the breach. Can, can, I, can I just talk with you on a thought dealing with the breach? Hallelujah. When Pastor Charles, he read, he talked about Sambalat, Tabez, and all of the Arabians, how they, how they found out that we have sealed the breaches. Now, Minister Harris, I'm not worried about your door because I'm not going to come in through the door. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about the club that's on your car because I'm not coming in through the club of your car. But what I want to do, as long as you keep on knowing that gas hand, I'm going to come in through the tank. And as long as you keep on knowing that oil pressure hand, I'm going to come in through the engine. You have to expose the breach. So, 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 it's something as long as they knew that they can no longer can come through the breach. Man, we got to stop this. We got to start some trouble. We got to take them out. We got to cause them to slip up. We got to cause them to draw back. Hallelujah. Why don't we send one of our messengers? Everybody's always sending somebody down to your house trying to figure out what's going on. So they can go back and start gossiping. Hallelujah. And every once in a while when you find out they're gossiping. Hallelujah. They'll cause that breach to open up in your life. Uh, when you know that you're healed. When you know that you're delivered. Uh, they'll come trying to dig in that old breach. Uh, but something about that breach. Uh, I can't break the breach no more. It's something about that breach. Uh, my shovel just can't work here no more. Something about that breach. Hallelujah. I can see the scar, but I can't breach the scar because somebody's healed right there. So they'll try to come in another way and figure out that I can't come in that way. So when they realize they can't come in that breach, now we're talking about the generational breach. I'm going to come in through your sons and your daughters. And if I can't get through your sons and your daughters, uh, I'm going to come through your grandchildren. Uh, by the time you, by the time your grand, by the time you realize your grandchildren got a breach, uh, you'll be too old to fix it for them. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. What the enemy has been trying to do is trying to get rid of the fixer. See, because grandma, you specialize in sealing the breach. But until I get rid of Nehemiah, they don't know how to repair the breach. We got to draw grandmama down to the place called Oh No. Hallelujah. But if I can't get grandma to come down to Oh No, 
We can't break through the breach. Can I speak to somebody today about the breach? Anybody got something they need to seal in this place? I didn't come here today to have a pity party. I came to get something fixed. Hallelujah. I heard God is a fixer. I heard he's a mind regulator. Thank you, Jesus. I heard he can raise the dead. But I know one thing that I know without a shadow of a doubt. That he specialized in masonry. Hallelujah. I saw this. I, I, I was I, reading the Bible. And a lot of times we, when we read the Bible, we miss certain characteristics. And we got to understand that we have the proof in the Bible. And the proof comes in the Bible where we find that when they laid Jesus in the borrowed tomb, yeah. hallelujah, they laid a stone across it. Now, if we don't get the evidence that right now that he was specialized in moving stones, thank you, Jesus. The stones are always placed in our life so that we can't get out or something can't come in. But God said, I'm specialized in moving stones. Thank you, Jesus. I realize that the breach is not you, but the breach is in you. I just, I just want to take a, I just want to take a small moment just 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 teach you a little bit that the breach we can never see the breach on how good you look we can never see it we can never see it we can never see it because we are wear the breach well men pastor Charles we were talking about the scab of the breach you know oftentimes we'll have a scab grow over an old wound and every once in a while, we'll peel that scab off, and it becomes another breach. God said, leave the scabs alone, because he's trying to heal you. He's trying to deliver you. Every time you get close to being delivered, you peel off the scab. You pull the scab off. Hallelujah. God said, leave the scab alone. And then I, I learned while we was talking about it, we was talking about the band-aid of the breach. Every once in a while, we'll get a band-aid, we'll place it on the wound, and we'll peel the band-aid off a little too soon and become moist. Yep, yep. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing right here. We haven't given it enough time to seal. And the very thing the enemy want to do to you is that he don't want you to have enough time to heal. So, so while, 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 while the healing process is taking place underneath the band-aid, the enemy said, take it off. And you simply thinking that you're healed, you're getting better, but all of a sudden you're exposed to the wrong atmosphere. There's certain kinds of, there's certain kinds of cement and mortar that you have to use. And they got certain mortar that they can put in water. And it has the audacity to seal the breach. Hallelujah. So there are certain things in our life. If you're, if you're not using the right kind of equipment and the right kind of, uh, 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 of, 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 how can I put it, tools, you can easily leave a breach. We talk about the scar of the breach. The scar of the breach it's just a, a, a just just a reminder of what was. <laughs> Hallelujah! It's a reminder of what was and now is. Uh, hallelujah! You may see my scars, uh, but it don't mean that I'm breachable right now, baby. Hallelujah! I've been sealed by the blood. Uh, hallelujah! Thomas, look at the holes in my hands. Uh, Take your finger and stick it through. I seal the breach. I'm a walking miracle. Woo, hallelujah. You looking at the scar. But I want to tell you a story behind the scar. 
The scar didn't used to heal like it did. The scars that let you know that I'm delivered and set free. The scars that let you know that I've risen from that lifestyle and all things have become new. Somebody need to give God praise. Why? Why ain't the enemy concerned about the door? You don't want to come in through the door because he knows that that's where you're most likely to think he's coming from. He ain't trying to come through that old whistling window that you've been trying to seal for many years. Hallelujah. He ain't trying to come through that old furnace that you got to go downstairs and kick it once in a while just to get it going. He ain't trying to come through all those things, but what he's trying to come through is he's trying to come through that mind of yours. Hallelujah. He's trying to come through those children of yours. Hallelujah. We got to understand one thing, one thing, and understand one thing clearly. God, hallelujah. We got to understand that the enemy of God, which is Satan himself, we don't give him no glory. There was a breach in heaven. And because there was a breach up there, we have breaches in our homes. Hallelujah. We got people coming in our homes telling all our business. You got our children telling all our business. You got people just talking about you behind your back because they think they know you. But I, t I come to tell somebody today, hallelujah, it's time to seal the breach in the home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Give God praise. I, I don't want to hold you long, but look, 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 listen, 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 listen. Our children would take what they hear at home and release it at school. They would tell your business like it's theirs. If you ain't never saw a child mimic daddy and mama, catch him while he at school. Catch him while they trying to play house. Ain't no playing house in my house. You can't pretend you, you ain't me. Hallelujah. Because they'll try to play mama and they'll try to play daddy. They'll try to play the preacher. They'll walk just like him, act like him, talk like him, do everything just like him. And that's what the enemy say. You know what? I'm going to come through that breach because she don't even know. Hallelujah. Because mama then sealed hers. If I get mama to lose it over her, hallelujah, I can get back into mama. See, that's how the enemy want to do. If he can get you to lose your mind over your children, that's exactly how, that's his plan right there. Hallelujah. I, I know you to seal the house. But when your children go out there being exposed to everybody else that's exposed to this, that, and the other, they want to come right in. And before you know it, you're looking at this child or that child, and you're ready to lose your mind. Understand that the breach is on the line. Religion is on the line. But if you're going to stay straight and focused before God, you got to recognize the breach in your life. I looked at this. I, I, I looked at this and I, I thought about it a long time, Pastor Charles. Here's what old scars would do to us. It would cause us to remember the time. And how we need to fix what's broken around our lives. Pastor Terry, you've been through some storms. And the enemy tried to stick his leg out. The trough caused you to fall down. But God said, I sent my angels to pick you right back up. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, all of the healing. And all of the worship that's going through you. God said, I deposited something. Hallelujah. 
I'm, I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show y'all something right now. That what the enemy thought he was trying to do, God said, I caused you to fall right into your victory. God said, I'll cause you to fall right into it. And then I turn around, I give my angels charge over you. And then they'll pick you right back on up. And what they was trying to sit you down, you said, no, I got this. I don't need my king, I got this. I sealed the breach over my daughters. I sealed the breach over my sons. And I'm getting up. I'm getting up with victory. I'm going to say what I had to say. Listen, listen. He could have did that to anybody else, Pastor Terry. He could have did that to anybody else. But because you are built to handle the pressure that comes with your calling, you, you didn't fought those battles. You know exactly what God would do when he's getting ready to do it. Somebody need to give up and get up and give God a praise. Listen, God said you made your withdrawal while you were down there. And when they was picking you up, uh, your daughter was being healed. Uh, your sons were being healed. Uh, oh, my God. Listen, you crushed that generational curse. You crush that generational curse. Somebody need to take their feet and crush that generational curse. I dare you to crush it. I dare you to crush it. Get ridiculous with it. Get ridiculous. I, I was watching. I was watching Charles while he was preaching, and then he, he he got that old school, just slamming his hand on the Bible, just uh. <laughs> while I'm slapping the word I'm slapping the devil thank you Jesus Woo! somebody need to praise God in this place oh mighty God look all of that all of that all of that I'm going to tell you Pastor Terry you may be still dealing with some things but you're not dealing with it all by yourself. I want you to picture every last person that came to pick you up as the same angels that are holding you up right now. Listen, I, I, now, I, I, I want, I, 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 if anything would ever happen to me, I would definitely want my wife in the house with me. I would definitely want her there to be a part of that. But I, I didn't see Pastor Terry being an icon in the hospital. If, if you ever heard her, I mean, she, she, she is not mean. She's, she's talking about what she already know. I've been dealing with doctors 22 years. This has been my second home. You're not sending me home until I get this done. I, 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 need, I, I, I thank God because I know that without a shadow of it, I got that same mentality. My wife don't send my husband home. Until you find out what's going on with my husband. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say they get back up again. Listen, so. We, Somebody give God praise in this place right now. Come on, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. I love the book of Nehemiah. And I want to get more in detail in it and give you a little bit more teaching on it. Have y'all been reading it? Some of y'all that I told you, you've been reading that? Are y'all? I know when y'all get to all these names and these different tribes, y'all be like, "Come on now." The blood they, that does matter. 
It does matter. It does matter because there comes a time that when, you know, you're really studying that word of God that you can say, you know, because of this tribe, this is why this person is the way he is. You know, all those things matter. And then when you go and you, and, and I, 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 I do this, for, I want you to do this for me too. All of those names, when you go to Sambalik and Tobias and all those uh, Arabians, those people that are considered his enemy, I need for you to research the names. In the normal dictionary and even the Bible, what it means in the Bible, you need to understand who you're dealing with because these men represent devils and all kinds of devils and generals in that devilish kind of category. Because any time that you want to disobey the orders of the leader, you have got to have been to lost your mind. Especially that kind of leader that they was under at that damn time right there because they didn't just take you out. You might as well get your chickens, your cows, everything on your farm, your kids, your grandchildren, everything is going right along with you and they ain't had nothing to do with it. So you have to be careful. So I want you to look up those names and I want you to, those topics that a lot of you, you guys got, I want you to think about that breach. The breach, the breach. We'll be going all the way into November with that um, and I will be, um, next week is already going to be someone coming up, uh, before one of us leaders, but I do want you guys to ready yourself, start studying. So you got two weeks to start studying. I will let you know who's going to be coming up on the third Sunday. So I want you to prepare yourself. Don't prepare yourself that week. Don't prepare yourself on Saturday before that day. This kind come by fasting and praying. Amen. So that's how I want you to prepare yourself. What I want to do is I want to pray the healing over everyone in here, and then we're going to end the broadcast, and then we're going to do the communion, and then we're going to go downstairs and uh, have my lovely wife bring out the uh, blueprint so some of you all can look at it if you want to. If you're in a rush, that's fine. But I, I, I do want the opinion your opinion matters it's just one part of the building that's going to be especially built for um, redeeming hearts and the rest of the building uh, we're going to be talking about what we're going to be doing in our areas this whole building is going to be designed to be multitasked so that we can do several things at one time in the building amen I want you to lay your hands on yourself and I want you to repeat after me. And I want you to repeat after me.